Hello there. My name is Alexander Benz, and I'm presenting on behalf of the Combine AF investigators. The title of our study is Outcomes of Patients with Atrial Fibrillation and Ischemic Stroke Despite Receiving Oral Anticoagulation. Our aim was to estimate the incidence of recurrent ischemic stroke and mortality in patients with atrial fibrillation who suffer an ischemic stroke despite being treated with a DOAC or a vitamin K antagonist. We used the combined AF data set, which includes all patients randomized in the pivotal trials of DOAC therapy in atrial fibrillation, RELY, Averroes, Rocket AF, Aristotle, and Engage AF TIMI48. Our population for this study were all patients with a first post-randomization ischemic stroke while being treated with oral anticoagulation, a DOAC or a vitamin K antagonist. We excluded those with permanent discontinuation of study drug prior to the first post-randomization ischemic stroke, and also excluded the few patients that were randomized to receive aspirin in the Averroes study. This figure shows how the analysis works. We included all patients with AF who were randomized to receive a DOAC or a vitamin K antagonist in the pivotal trials, who experienced the first post-randomization ischemic stroke while being on study medication. This is where the analysis starts with the index event being day zero. We then followed these patients and looked for recurrent ischemic stroke following the index event and mortality. This slide shows the main results. We included a total of 1,163 patients with AF and a first post-randomization ischemic stroke while being treated with a DOAC or a VKA. The Kaplan-Meier curve on the left shows the incidence of recurrent ischemic stroke following the index event. And you can see that the cumulative incidence at one year was as high as 7% with a 95% confidence in the world that went from 5.2 to 8.7%. If you look a little closer, you can see that the risk early on is even higher. Now the incremental incidence of recurrent ischemic stroke following the first year is not as high, but still totaling at, at around 10% at two years. Many patients are experienced to at least temporarily discontinue oral anticoagulation after they have an ischemic stroke while being treated with it. So what we did next was to do a sensitivity analysis that started at 15 days after the index event and only included those without permanent discontinuation of study drugs since the index event. This analysis um, included 640 patients and yielded a consistently high um, estimate for the rate of recurrent ischemic stroke of 6.8% at one year, suggesting that the high risk is not due to lack of anticoagulation therapy after the index event. This last slide shows mortality after a first post-randomization ischemic stroke while being treated with a DOAC or a VKA, and the Kaplan-Meier curve on the left is showing the incidence of mortality after a stroke. You can see that the cumulative incidence of mortality is also very high at about 12% at three months and as high as 18% at one year. Our conclusions from this study were that patients with AF who suffer an ischemic stroke despite receiving best medical care with a DOAC or a VKA are at very high risk of recurrent ischemic stroke and of death. These patients clearly have an unmet medical need and randomized trial trials are needed to evaluate strategies at improving outcomes in this high-risk population. Thank you very much.